So it's common I hear a lot of people say that support and resistance doesn't work and for me that makes me confused because for me support and resistance has been the ultimate way to trade and I found out that it's a huge part of my trading and has led me to success in trading and when looking at other traders and very successful people all of them use some form of support and resistance which I feel is key. So when people say support and resistance trading does not work it makes me feel like they're not looking at it properly. So that's why I decided to make this video to talk about my support and resistance strategy and maybe why it's not working for you or why it has worked for me and maybe this can help you implement it into your own trading and realize what is the proper way to use support and resistance and how I've used it to make my trading that much better. So now people say online it's too basic that you'll get faked out but in reality there's a lot of layers to it. Support and resistance is like your road, it's your guideline and without it you don't really know where you're going in the market. That is why it's key to have proper levels and in this video we're going to look at maybe some of the common mistakes people make with support and resistance how to avoid them to make sure that you have super accurate levels on your chart and make sure that you can catch the moves between them because that's the goal now if we take any market whether it be stocks forex crypto charts will have candles some form of structure and some form of support and resistance no matter where you draw a line on the chart you will find that price has reacted on it somewhere in the past and that is why it's obviously going to be relevant to know where price is reacting off things so we can use that information when we actually trade. So that is exactly what I'm going to discuss. Hopefully this video can be useful and you enjoy it. So with that being said, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, before we start the video, you know what I'm going to say for all of my current subscribers. Can we do the YouTube business? If you're new to the channel, welcome to the club. The YouTube business is leaving a like, a subscribe if you enjoy the content and a comment. I enjoy reading your comments. Supports get the video out to people if you find it useful and other people can find it useful. And yeah, putting out a lot of content. There's a lot of gems on my channel, so feel free to check that out. And yeah, all my Instagram link down below. Make sure to follow that for constant updates and uh, yeah all my official links free discord below if you want to join a community get access to my documents that i share with you guys and also access to my journal because if you guys see in the title here it says to give you 70 to 80 percent accuracy we're going to look at that where do i get that number from how can i prove to you that number is true so with that being said let's get straight into the charts and let's talk about it and uh, yeah so as i was saying how do we know that support and resistance is tested and it works well obviously support and resistance is a part of my strategy but this is basically live data from the live streams as you can see in the thumbnail, I, I, in the title, I put 70 to 80%. So I don't want to show you that I'm BSing that. And that just comes from the win rate of this, of uh, basically my strategy, the way that I trade using support and resistance. That is where I got that figure from. This is live stream journal, all the trades that I've taken. This can be accessed in my Discord group. That's just a quick overview of showing you that support and resistance strategy based on it does work. So yeah, let's get into the video and discuss more. All right, guys, so here's the chart and here is how support and resistance and how my strategy works. So first of all, understand why do we mark support and resistance, right? The reason why we mark support and resistance is we know where price can potentially resist and where price can potentially push through. Because if we have a resistance, then obviously we want to be careful that price it's 50 50 at that point, right? So obviously, if we have things following our support and resistance like we know the direction of the market we know which way the the market is more likely to go today that can help us to break through resistance but if then we get above resistance now listen what you have you know that let's say the market today is going to do what is going to continue up you have a resistance and now you know that price is breaking through the resistance something like this now you have a lot of probabilities with you right you know that the market's going up based on something which we learn called bias so bias is helps you identify which way the market goes. I have videos on that. You can check out my 2023 full course. There is a whole section on bias there. Then once we know that we have bias, then we know that we have a resistance here. Now, if we cross that resistance and we know we have a clean trading zone, so e.g. example, there's no resistances here or there's no resistances till here, then we know that, hey, most likely price is going to continue to there and price is going to go up. And that's how we can use support and resistance. So if you think about support and resistance like that, it obviously makes it a lot different. So that's how you should view it, not as a breakout zone, not as zones that you want to try trade uh, 
right at and many people the biggest mistake they make at support and resistance is they treat a resistance as an area they should sell from and a support an area they should buy from and this is mistake number one i told you i was going to tell you the three mistakes and mistake number one is treating a resistance as an area to sell from and a support as an area like this to buy from that is completely wrong we don't want to use as example here resistance as an area to sell because every time you try to sell this like let's be honest every time you sold the resistance yeah maybe right it's hard to find that there's a resistance here this is in hindsight we see that there's a resistance but let's say you've done the work you've scrolled to the back and you said you found this major resistance here right so every time price went to this resistance it rejected and then this time you know it rejected here and then when it came back up here like let's say this is the two resistances you found and now you said you have a resistance zone right so you said this is my resistance zone and this is oh sorry this is how i see a lot of people do uh support and resistance trading it's like that's my resistance zone when we come here i'm gonna press sell they see this candle and they're like okay it respected the zone like all of these candles what am i gonna do i'm gonna press sell boom stopped out support and resistance doesn't work yeah, because that's not how you're supposed to use support and resistance. If price is bullish, if I know price is more likely to continue up here and we're at the resistance, I know that if price can get above this, that's going to be great for my opportunity to take buys because this candle is going to be doing what all of these candles could not do, which is get above. And that's how I'm going to use resistance. I'm going to use the break of resistance. Or if I am have a bullish bias from down here, I'm going to buy to this resistance and I know at this resistance I need to wait to see if we get above or we get below. If we stay below I need to wait patiently until it's time to sell and it's not time to sell till we see what candle closures. So the number one thing and the second biggest mistake people are going to make is that they're not going to wait for candle closures in and around support and resistance. People just take it breaking through, people take it bouncing off, and this is where you go wrong because support and resistance is not meant to be used as a definite, okay, if we break through, we're going through, if we break below, we're going through. No, it's meant to be used as a zone to target, as a zone to get above or get below. And how do we confirm if we're getting above or below? By time frame closures, right? So 15 minutes is the lowest I use as a confirmation above a support and resistance. And then obviously the higher time frame, the more confirmation, the higher time frame closures, because you will find support and resistance on the four hour time frame like this. And we know if we have a four hour candle doing this, closing above this resistance, where's our next resistance? All the way up here, right? That's where our next resistance is. Guess what price did? Price moved clean because there was no resistance. But if you kept trying to buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, it wouldn't be ready until we got the close. So wait for candle closures, right? That's the second biggest mistake I see. Now, obviously, the biggest mistake and the easiest one is going to be people are just confused how to use support and resistance. Now, as I said, I'm going to link that video in the description. My 2023, uh, 2023, 2024 full course explains how to do the markup from top down. And that's the thing. People seem to only mark support and resistance everywhere, loosely, whatever resistance. They look back like all the way here, like, oh, OK, yeah, this resistance was here. No, focus on what the most recent support and resistance where price is reacting off currently and use that to your advantage and do a top down analysis. So what is a top down analysis? This means starting from the daily time frame, right? Weekly time frame. So even the monthly you want to sometimes mark. So start from your monthly time frame. Go mark your support, mark your resistance, use the most recent levels, go down to the daily time frame, mark your support, mark your resistance. Next, go to the four hour, one hour and etc. And that's how you're going to use it. So this is a huge mistake I see, right, is that people don't do that top down analysis. And once you do a top down analysis, you will get your levels, right? So here's a messy example. I haven't cleaned it up. But look, this is my levels. These are all my levels. And let's say you were taking a buy. Well, guess what? I have a level right here and price respected it. How did it respect it? Because I was able to mark it, right? Now, I have obviously haven't cleaned up these levels. This is just, but I just flicked to this chart here just to quickly show you all of my levels. But these are all ready for my next potential opportunities, right? These are all ready. All these levels are marked and ready here to see what could potentially happen or not happen. So if we go and see, let's say a cleaner chart here and we look at price currently, this is also another massive problem that I see and I want you guys to take note of this. Do not be buying and selling in the same zone. Stick to one bias. That's where people go wrong with support and resistance. And what changed it for me when I was using support and resistance is A, these are the two things, right? Number one 
is going to be right this is the number number one is going to be use support and resistance as zones right support and number one s and let's let's do and right r right s and r equals zones so look at the market as zones don't look at it as trend don't look at it higher structure higher lows higher highs no matter what time frame you'll see something different five minute you see a downtrend 15 minute you see an uptrend so use bias right which is something that i told you i have in the 2024 course use bias understand what direction makes sense and then treat market as what ranges and every single range is where you're looking so if you're looking for buys you're looking to capitalize between the ranges or from the range to the next range and these in between zones are all your support and resistances blocking you same way on the way down we have ranges to go down right view the market in ranges that's very very important now obviously this is what i mean it has layers right trading has layers we have layers to be able to find what ranges are able to trade what uh, zones can you trade what candle closures make sense what setups and this is all having a trading plan so support and resistance itself is the main base it's like the fundamental that's why i spend so much time discussing it is because without that you, you don't have a base then you start layering on top okay now i know where my lines are where can I trade? Okay, how can I enter the trade? Okay, when do I exit the trade? And when it comes to exiting the trade or when entering the trade, another common mistake I see, which people repeat again and again, and you guys are going to be surprised at this. And this is such a simple thing, but many people seem to do it is let's say we had a support down here. Okay, let's say people we were at the support. People would say, if we go below the support, I'm going to sell. But if we don't get below, I will also buy. Buying and selling in the same place is really bad because let's say it's it's the equivalent of doing of that example we looked back here when let's say this candle broke out here. When this candle closed above here, let's say this candle didn't close above. Let's say I moved this something. Let's say this resistance was here. So before this candle, when we were here, you said if this candle closes above, I'll be looking for buys. Let's say it didn't close above. All of a sudden now you're looking for sells. That doesn't make sense. You can't switch your mind just because one candle did one something. You shouldn't be looking for buys and sells in the same place. Just because it didn't close above doesn't mean it's now a sell, right? That's my point that I said in the beginning of the video. Do not try sell at resistance and buy at support. If you're going, if this is a candle that did not close above, it still means that buys can play out. You probably just have to wait till the next candle. And guess what the next candle did? Oh, the next candle did close above. And now you get what? Respect the support. What a surprise. The support became, the resistance came support now, retested. And the whole time you were looking for buy uh, sells and you missed out on the easy buy opportunities. And that's where people go wrong. Whereas if you use support and resistance simplicit, simply, right? If you use support and resistance simply, it will be a lot more clear. You'll have a lot more clarity in the markets and it will be a very easy to trade between ranges and ranges. And it's game changing. I'm telling you, horizontals are the strongest lines the strongest way to navigate your way through the markets as a retail trader don't tell me about this don't tell me about that no matter what strategy always fundamentally will come from some form of zones which is support and resistance so that is basically my support and resistance strategy that is how i use it now it is a part of my strategy it's a major part but it's not my whole strategy as i said if you want more in depth but i wanted to bring this to people's attention why I made a separate video talking just about support and resistance because I wanted to bring this to your attention to tell you guys how important it is some common mistakes that you might be making in it and which are making you which make you feel like that hey this is why it's failing this is why support and resistance is failing for me and uh, which it won't if you maybe make these small tweaks the thing I found in the markets is that small tweaks make a massive difference and it's mostly the small tweaks that change the strategy or change your way of trading. So focus on that, right? Focus on the small goals will lead you to the big one, right? So focus on tweaking something instead of changing the whole thing because you think it doesn't work. That's a common thing I see. So if you stuck around to the end of the video, I appreciate you watching the whole video here. I really do hope you found it useful and you did get some sort of information. Let me know in the comments below if you did. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Subscribe for future videos. Join us on the live streams. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you then. So with that being said, take care, trade sharp, and hopefully catch you guys very, very soon. Peace.